Hey, what is going on everybody? I am super stoked that it is Saturday. I finally get to make my way down to the shop. One thing I have to do is set the Fraser project up exactly how it's going to be on display, but I want to do that at my shop. That way I can make sure that all of the pieces are there, that nothing's broken, that I didn't put a bunch of stuff in a box somewhere that I've forgotten about. I want to make sure that everything is set up and ready to go. Then I'm going to break it all down and load it up and not touch it again until Wednesday when I'm setting it up at the show. So that's what's on the agenda today. I'm going to cruise down there, set everything up. I have a couple of new components that I want to add to the build and then a couple of things that I want to rework. So some of the rework is going to be in regards to the plexiglass front and top. I want to make sure that those are secure. And one of the new additions are some puck lights that go on the top because I heard that the lighting is a little bit dim at this venue. Um, so I want to make sure that my build has proper lighting. So I wanted to take you with me and you can see exactly what the setup process is all about. So I just got here and uncovered the build. Everything looks great. It's pretty much just as I had left it. So I'm gonna get this top part off and I'm gonna start getting to work setting this up. Um, I can see a couple of things that are gonna need some attention. The moisture has gotten to this painting. So I will have to go through and make another frame for it. See if I can't straighten it out. All right, so it's been a little bit of an experience down here today at the shop with the Fraser Project. So my original plan was to come down, just set everything up, make sure that everything looked good, all the pieces were there, there were no forgotten parts or something that I put somewhere, and then I get to Chicago and realize I'm missing a whole box of goods. So I wanted to get everything set up exactly how it's going to be on display and make sure that everything was good and, and, and present. Um, however, when I got here... I noticed that there was a lot of damage to the build and so far I've been working on it for probably three hours and I'm just just starting to make some headway on it. Really it has to do with the fluctuations in climate um, in the shop. It doesn't get super extreme like it doesn't freeze in here but it does get high humidity and there's not a lot of ventilation and when I first started the build I used a lot of hot glue and I don't use that now. Um, but in the beginning, I didn't really, I wasn't really familiar with other products and, and what to use and what would be better. So I used a lot of hot glue because it was like an immediate fix. Right. And the problem with that I'm discovering is that a lot of that original stuff that I did is popping loose from, I'm guessing from the climate and it just doesn't hold forever. So a lot of damage back here on this balcony view part, that's, a lot of the panels are coming loose, a lot of the trim pieces are coming loose, and it was a real nightmare. There were some issues with some of the paintings warping because the frames were put together with hot glue, so I'm going to have to take the frames off and reframe those paintings. Thankfully, Niles is okay here. Um, I'm also gluing everything into place. At first, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the build, so I didn't want to glue everything in place in case I wanted to start recreating different scenes from the show and putting different things in different places and it doesn't look like that's the direction that I'm going to go with this thing. Um, I don't think I'm going to start recreating different scenes and, and animating it and doing that kind of stuff. So it makes more sense with the tour and, and making it easier to set up to just glue everything in place. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, so on top of the repair issues that I've got, I'm also doing that. But I've also noticed that there's a lot of pieces that I'm just having, I'm having a little bit of a struggle here because I want to leave it the way that it is, but because it was my first build, and I guess what I'm talking about is 
like improvements that I could make on certain pieces that I'm looking at now with a couple years experience under my belt and I'm thinking I should have done it a different way because you know as an artist I've grown and I've learned different ways to do different things from my very first piece but on the other hand I kind of want to leave everything alone and leave it there because it was my first piece um, I don't want to go through and, and remake all these things in the way that I know how to now because then what am I going to do with the old stuff just pitch it or put it in a bag and then it's not my original build anymore. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but it's kind of a bit of a conflict because I see pieces. And I'll give you a good example if you can see them. A good example are these books. So I made one book you can see over here that's got the pages and there's full color pages with all the different pictures inside there and stuff. And then these other two books were some of the very, very first ones that I made um, before the structure was even complete. And you can see that they're just kind of little wooden blocks with the covers of the books around them. I mean, that, that works okay, and it looks good from a distance, but I know now that I can make them with full pages. And But I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave them because this was my first build. It was my first attempt. I would learn, was learning everything as I went. And I think there's something kind of charming about having the first build. Now, I think personally, when we see the Fraser Project next to the Nervosa build or the record shop, I think by leaving it in original condition like this, it's going to kind of be a timeline of progression for me as an artist. In other words, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see, to see this build and then see Nervosa and the record store and kind of see the progress that I've made. So I've decided to leave everything as it was originally built. Of course, I'm doing all the repairs, getting everything fixed up. And I'm really happy with everything as a whole. I just was a little bit disheartened by the damage. There were pieces of the floor lifting, this back balcony area. All of the panels were falling off of that and becoming detached. So I'm hoping that now everything is going to be Everything is going to be solid, it's going to be fixed, and I'm not going to have this issue again, I hope. So that's what I'm doing. So far I've got three hours, almost four hours at this point into just the setup and repairs. I'd say I've got maybe another four hours working on this until it's actually ready to show, and then I'll have disassembly. And disassembly shouldn't take too long because, like I said, I've been gluing all these things into place so that when I get to the show, maybe I just have to set I don't know, three or four pieces into place and that's it. Instead of every book and every nook and every cranny, I had to set everything up before and it took, um, I think when I did it the very first time at the state fair, it took us over three hours for me to set everything up individually. I'm hoping now it's gonna be a matter of 15, 20 minutes to make sure that everything's looking good, wipe it down, dust it off. And so that's where we're at. But I wanted to fill you in on kind of how my day's going. It's not going great. I ran into town to pick up some supplies and of course, as it always happens with me when I get into town and I get into the store, I completely lose my mind and forget every single item that I went there for. And that's what happened today. So I, I, I left, I went into town to get some things. I didn't make a list because I was in a hurry and I was hungry. So I just got in the car and left and I get to the store with no list, with no nothing and completely forgot every single item. The only item that I got. I got two items that I remembered because they were just the main things on the list. One was this little fan right here because I'm burning hot in here and I wanted to move some air around but I didn't want to stir up a bunch of dust and stuff like that around the shop so I just wanted this little fan to clip it on so I remembered that. The other thing were some of these bulbs because the last three times I've shown this thing I've had at least one bulb burned out and I forget to bring these and so I'm like okay I'm buying a few packages just to keep but it says scented candle wax warmer. So these things get crazy hot. That's not what I want. I don't want to burn down the venue. So I got packs of those that I can't use. I can take them back, but I probably won't. They'll end up in a drawer somewhere here at the shop. But anyway, that trip into town was completely unproductive. So I'm back here. I'm making it work with what I've got. And hopefully it's just going to be better than ever and more solid than ever. I fully anticipate having to do a lot of repairs along the way on this tour. And the cool thing about it is 
I have my backpack that I carry with me. I take it to the miniature club meetings. I take it when I set this build up. And this backpack contains almost every item that I've used to make this entire build. So I'm going to continue rocking out here for a little bit. And I'm going to keep working on this thing and plugging away so that when I bring it to you, it looks as good as it can possibly look. It has been a crazy day today. When I first got here, my plan was to set the build up just like I would at the shows. Um, make sure that everything was ready, all the pieces were there, everything was still the way that it was supposed to be. But as I started setting it up, I started noticing that there was a lot of damage to the build, a lot more than I thought there actually had been. Um, every time I came down and checked on it here at the shop, it looked like it was in good shape, everything looked fine. I lifted the cover up and everything seemed to be okay. As I started touching it to rearrange it to move it, um, I realized quickly that that was not the case. It's been kind of an emotional day looking at the build, thinking that there was just so much wrong with it. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to be able to bring it back um, in time for the show. I knew it was all fixable stuff. It's it, not to sound super dramatic. I knew everything was repairable. I mean, it was just some glue and whatever, but you know, when you're in that disheartened state and everything seems like it's broken and some of the furniture had come come apart and it felt like you were building the whole thing from scratch, plus it wasn't set up so it just looked gnarly, um, you know, it was a stressful, it was a really stressful day from that standpoint. But the good news is, the really good news is, I've gotten everything fixed, everything is glued into place um, with maybe five exceptions. Other than that, everything is the exact way right now that it's going to appear at the show. Another really cool thing that I was able to add while I was here are these little puck lights. They're just sitting on top of the build and that's how they're gonna stay. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with those. I'm just gonna set them on top of the build. They're just here to illuminate the build in certain spots in low light conditions so that no matter what kind of lighting we have at the venue, that's not an issue. My build will be lit up and everybody can see it and enjoy it no matter what kind of lighting situation we have. Another cool feature of these puck lights is that I have them on a wave activated sensor. So all you have to do really is just wave your hand and they go off, wave your hand and they come back on. There's a little sensor down here. Um, you don't have to get everything plugged in and then realize that you can't reach the on off switch. You just wave your hand and that's all there is to it. So about these puck lights, this was plan A. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do if these didn't work. And I know it's really dark in here and it's kind of hard to see me, but the reason is because I wanted you to see how it's going to look fully self-sufficient. Now, I don't have the um, computer screen in the back yet because I still want to go through that. I want to go through all the electronics, make sure they're all up to par, everything's working right. Um, so I don't have that installed yet because I haven't gotten to that point. I made a compromise gluing it into place because Number one, you can't really move it without, you know, trauma to the build, which is okay. And number two, in some spots you can see where the glue is holding it in place. You know, I guess that's okay too, because without it being glued into place, it took hours to set this thing up. And that's okay for the first show, and it was okay for the second show and the third time that I've shown it. But I was getting a little quicker each time, but the problem is going to be the next show after Chicago, or maybe the show after that, I might have Nervosa done. Um, I'm sitting here with this trailer right next to me, it's ready to go. Who knows how many builds I'll have ready to exhibit, and I can't spend three hours setting up the Fraser Project every single time, and then another three hours setting up the Nervosa build, and you know, so on and so forth. I just can't do it. Um, you know, you're looking at an eight or ten hour day setting up a few builds, and it just doesn't make any sense. So, everything is glued into place. Like I said, except for the TV and the chairs, and that's because I'm not sure how permanent the TV is for now, and the chairs, I'm still kind of rearranging. They're not that big of a deal to set four chairs into place, so not super worried about it. But I am going to zoom you in because I do want you to see all of the lighting the way that it is now, and it just blows my mind. Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling, toss salads and scrambled eggs. And maybe I seem a bit confused Yeah, maybe, but I got you pegged <laughs> But I don't know what to do with 
those tossed salads and scrambled eggs. They're calling again. Scrambled eggs all over my face. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the keypad and mouse that controls the balcony view. It's a lot easier than the big clunky ones. So let's pull it up real quick and see what it looks like. There she is. So I've got different views in here, and I realize that in real life it's it's going to stay the same. It's not going to change. Um, but also, I wanted it to be a little bit different each time you saw the build, and I thought it was pretty cool to have like different angles because in the show, you know, you see outside, you see the balcony view, and depending on where they're standing in the apartment, it looks a little bit different. You get a different perspective. So I wanted to kind of bring that to life a little bit by changing what you see on the screen. And I think it looks really cool having these different um, different views like this. So I'm going to keep it like that. I was going to shorten it down and change it to be just one view, but I really like the way that this looks. So I'm going to keep it this way. Everything is good with the electronics, the computer system. Everything's working perfectly. So this is ready to go, ready to be packed up and ready to be seen in Chicago this weekend. Come check it out. All right, it is just after midnight. Finally got everything loaded up into the back of the navigator. Um, you can see the build fits perfectly back there. Everything slid in really good, uh, better than I was expecting. But it was a long day nevertheless, so I'm going to head home and get some rest and pack up everything else that I'm going to need for this trip and get on the road Wednesday. <laughs>